So Twitter rolled out today. Um, this, uh, you know, to basically a, do a dozen different brands, if you will, um, this option of being able to purchase. And you've got recording artists. Um, I think Brad Paisley's one of them. Burberry um, is one. Home Depot where uh, with a select group of people, they're going to be able to, subscribers to Twitter, are going to be able to actually purchase um, using Twitter. And we've seen this before, but, you know, I, I'm still not completely comfortable that, A, um, is it a secure way to purchase? And B, is that really how we use Twitter? I think you have to look at the platform itself and understand how we use it. I don't really follow brands on Twitter. I look for news and information. On Facebook, I might look at brands, but... It's a little different user experience and yeah. how I use Google Plus is different than how I use Pinterest. I think Pinterest makes complete sense. It's absolutely there should be uh, payment options on. I'd, I'd be in big trouble because I love Pinterest and I'd be buying all the time. But I don't think it really makes sense for Twitter. What do you say about that, Esteban? I, I actually think it really makes sense because the the audience for this is advertisers. And, you know, television was not created for people to see ads Radio was not created for ads. Magazines were not created for ads. But that's how these media were sub subsidized, right? This is how they made money. And it's the same case for Facebook and Twitter. And over the past, uh, you know, half a decade or more, social commerce, this idea has sort of evolved from being uh, a link and trying to get the attribution for it, the way that companies like Dell try to say, hey, we sell, we sold this amount of money over Twitter to something like a Facebook app or a fake Facebook tab where you just had a list of products and you sold them. This idea of social commerce has always been interesting and some brands have actually gone far enough to uh, build platforms and tools where people could talk to each other and turn a button on and do Facebook. But in the end, what brands really want to do is connect a tweet or a presence on a social network or a social, or a social media site and then connect that to a sale. And this is what that does. So Hunter, for example, is doing a lot for Fashion Week. And for Fashion Week, they're going to be showing uh, boots in, in L.A. for that target market based on that weather. And they're going to do something different in London. Well, if they could actually use this product tomorrow, and I don't know if they are, but let's just assume that they did, they could actually sell those products from the tweet itself. And Evian is another example. Evian was giving away free water over Twitter. If you tweeted at them using a hashtag, they'd come to you. It was a very inefficient process, but it was very well received by people in New York City that simply wanted to get some water. They could have easily said, buy now for zero dollars, and then you deliver it the way Uber delivers, uh, you know, brings a taxi to you and takes you somewhere else. So to me, it's about adding that extra layer of seamlessness where if you actually want to buy something right then and there, and let's assume that Twitter and Facebook become places where we actually hold our credit cards and Facebook actually already is holding credit cards, then I don't see I don't see why not. I don't think it affects the user experience. And in fact, from the advertiser perspective, it enhances it. Will will people actually do it? That that that's you know, time will tell. The interesting thing about direct marketing is you don't need a lot of people clicking through to make money. You really don't. I mean, everybody talks about this has been the constant harp of the brand based people, the people who do um, marketing for awareness. They, they talk about their buzz numbers like 40% uh, awareness and all these numbers and they say it's fantastic and then they mock the direct marketers for getting 0.3%. But if you get 0.3%, you can make millions of dollars sometimes. And quite frankly, you know, all they need is a moderate success with this and it's going to generate enough profits to be profitable for everybody. I mean, I think that's the, the biggest story here. And in terms of the safety, um, I, I, am I right about it? I mean, I think Twitter is doing this w in conjunction with, with Stripe. Stripe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with yeah, Stripe. It's Stripe. It's not, so there's hundreds of sites that use Stripe as well. So if you have a problem with Twitter, you're going to have a problem with a lot of other sites that you don't even know are running on Stripe. Exactly. So how are they going to market then this to consumers? Are they going to say, listen, this is how we're rolling it out? I mean, how are they going to make consumers it, feel comfortable and make It will just show up. It will honestly just show up. The way that app install ads, most, most people when they talk about advertising on Facebook and Twitter, they forget about app installs. But there's a whole group of advertisers that are advertising apps to be installed or for apps to be engaged with. And this has been big money for Facebook. And, and it's working really well for Twitter because you press a button, takes you to the app store, and all of a sudden you have an app. And so, you know, the way that this will work is that now advertisers are just going to have one extra option 
in the way that they can advertise there, right? So on Twitter, you can advertise your account, you can advertise a trend, you can advertise a tweet. Well, now you can also advertise, uh, basically add another layer of that tweet that says, you know, buy button, and, and now people can buy it. And and how exactly it works in the back end, I'm not exactly sure, but if we, if we look at the examples that they've shown so far, it's things like uh, the fancy, you know, selling a, a Nest thermostat, and which is a product that's what, $200, $200 or so. You know, it's, it's not a big purchase, but it's not a small purchase either. So that seems to be the use case, but I can see this happening for, for t-shirts, you know, for pretty much anything that somebody may want right then and there, or that has a real time location, time sensitive element, you know, concert tickets, um, uh, specials that have to do with a promotion that, you know, only during a certain event, only during South by Southwest, only during fashion week, Twitter may be a really good place to do that. You know, it's, it's interesting. I don't want to, I, 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 I'm not a big anti-social commerce guy. I don't, I, I think social commerce sounds like a great term. It's a great term to describe it, but it's actually, when you think about it and you unpack about it, it it's more about relevance commerce. I mean, that's where this is really going to take off because, you know, you, you've got people with mobile devices interacting on social networks, seeing something that they want to buy, they press a button, they buy it because everything works seamlessly exactly to the instant that I want it. I see it. I know it. I have it. It's relevant to what's going on with me right now. Um, those are the things that are going to make social commerce take off. Here's my question back to the whole Twitter commerce conversation. I think it makes, again, Pinterest makes absolute sense. You're on Pinterest because you're looking at things that you like and you may or may not want to buy them and you're putting them on your pin board with Facebook. You know, you're kind of interested in, in things that might be available to buy, but on is the Twitter user really on Twitter because they're following brands and they may or may not want to buy something. I think See, you're, you're thinking about it in the, in the lowest common, the lowest common denominator of ad units. I mean, essentially we're inserting an ad in, into a place, into a news stream. It's not relevant to the content and it just comes out of nowhere and it, you know, it interrupts the stream and it gives you an opportunity to buy a product and probably not. I mean, they're probably not going to do it like that. Um, now, to say that just because you don't follow a lot of brands is not really the case with a lot of other people. I mean, think about it. Um, every gamer follows Xbox, follows PlayStation, follows um, the Wii. They follow all these gaming sites, etc. And if you add ads into the mix for instant purchases of like, okay, the latest game is out, purchase it now. Those kind of opportunities are going to be fantastic for the brands to take advantage of. And then, of course, there's the relevancy aspect. I mean, that's where the rubber meets the road in all social commerce. I mean, you know, if uh, Twitter, because of algorithm gate recently, um, you know, they're, they're basically starting to test the opportunities to place favorited content from one user into another user's stream. It caused a lot of outrage, but essentially what the end game of that has to be, and I'm, I'm just speaking out my butt right now, I'm just, you know, <laughs> speculating. But That's the end a nice visual. Thanks for that, Bob. My butt. Okay. No, but, um, you know, the, the end game has to be the fact that they're trying to figure out ways to insert content relevantly into someone else's stream that can eventually be a way to insert ads in a relevant fashion. Well, and, and don't forget that, you know, if you want relevancy, ultimately every Twitter user, every Facebook user is making decisions. They have another tab. And they're shopping for, for something in that tab, whether they're making purchases or not, you know, we don't know. But most people on Earth with an Internet connection are shopping at some point. Um, and what does that mean? Retargeting and remarketing on Twitter, on Facebook will be relevant because if you're spending some time searching for a car and all of a sudden you see a tweet that says, you know, fifteen hundred dollars off of that Toyota, then you know, maybe people won't buy right then and there, but I'm sure that Twitter and Facebook are going to come up with ways to get as close as possible to getting people to go to that dealership. In the case of a Nest thermostat, people will just buy it right there.